Hey everyone, so this one is going to be a casual uh, response kind of video, so I will link the people's channels in the description. In regards to something that YJM1991 had said, as well as Gestures Court, now known as Queen Gambit, they have both talked about extroverted intuition and what that might look like as far as interpreting somebody with extroverted intuition. In this case, specifically with songs or lyrics, I think casual cognition also touched on this as well as far as writing. So uh, several people have brought this up and it's something I'm going to try to walk through as well with the audience because I do think it's something that is good for typologists or people trying to figure out even people in their family or friends if they're using extroverted intuition and I do think that this stands out at least to me so hopefully it will stand out um, to everybody else as well. Um, so a majority of this is going to be on the artist Emily Haynes from Metric. She uses introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted sensing, and extroverted intuition. She's on those axes, so I will go through hers. All right, so here's the song by Metric Wet Blanket. And as you hopefully can see in the first line here, falling for the creep, the body leech, here he comes. She's not actually talking about a leech in the physical sensory. It's a very uh, abstract and also intuitive type connection that you have to dig for meaning. So. I think you'll be able to notice that with a lot of these songs, it's not going to be what it actually means. You have to connect the meaning. And sometimes that will be through introverted sensing details that they're mentioning from their past or introverted feeling lens where they're talking about how they feel about something abstractly with extroverted intuition so the next line, vicious hypnosis, clenched fist, saying it's wrong to want more than a folk song. Again, it's it's not, it could be hard for somebody to connect what she is meaning by these lyrics. I personally actually love this song because she's talking about a woman or a male who, well, actually in this song, it's a woman who is like a doormat or somebody who doesn't stick up for themselves and it's deemed a wet blanket. And she obviously can't get away from this person. So here's some descriptions underneath the shaker knit. He's a brick wall. I mean, he's not a literal brick wall. He's um, impenetrable, essentially. I don't know if I've got, I think that's good for this one. So the next one is the metric song, Patriarch on a Vespa. And already, I think with the title, you can see that there's a meaning to this message. Patriarch meaning male dominated or led society on a Vespa, which is like a scooter. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so kind of a weird connection, right? At least I hope you would see that. And then the first line is promiscuous makes an entrance. Her mouth is full of questions. So promiscuous is now the, this is usually in the figurative language. So the adjective promiscuous is now personified or um, turned into a person in this description that is stated here. Her mouth is full of questions. This is a really cool way to describe how one w might be feeling or wondering something 
and she connects that to a body part. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. I tend to talk in rambling circles. So are we all brides to be? Are we all designed to be confined by ourselves, chastity belts and lock them, organize our lives and lose the key? I like that lyric. I really like that she was trying to say, basically, are the traditional woman, is that like your lot in life? Is this kind of traditional value, or I guess I'll just say societal traditional values that are upheld for women? And then she says, our faces all resemble dying roses. So that's very abstractly descriptive. <laughs> And it gives you a visual image of what someone's withered face might look like and perhaps a feeling attached to it. And then from, from trying to fix it, that's why they look like dying roses. And when instead we should break it, we got to break it before it breaks us. So that's her opinion is that it sounds like she would like to rebel and not be this, this role, this gender role that is um, thrust upon her. You can kind of see the rest, hopefully. Fear of pretty houses and their porches, fear of biological risk watches, fear of comparison shopping, dogs on leashes behind fences barking. All of this is a lot of detail, which I attribute to a uh, introverted sensing and it it jumps around so the content is jumping around from pretty houses now to wristwatches to comparison shopping dogs behind their fence and then little pillows um, all sensory details but the hopping that you see is I think the extroverted intuition. Next one. So I'm not gonna go too far into this one. It's one of my favorite songs. I'll admit I have cried many times to this song, but basically this one I, I think is more introverted feeling. So did they tell you you should grow up when you wanted to dream? Did they warn you better shape up if you want to succeed? I don't know about you, who are they talking to? They're not talking to me. I'm higher than high, lower than deep. I'm doing it wrong, singing along. And I think this fits really well for an INFP. I think that that's something that they would really struggle with in society. At least that's what I got from it. She's in this dream world and they want to pull her out of it. There's no glitter in the gutter. There's no twilight galaxy. This one is grow up and blow away. And I, again, I'm not going to go too far into it because by this point, I think with her, you can hopefully see the metaphors and figurative language and it uses, her lyrics use a lot of abstract comparisons. In this one, she uses a combination, again, of introverted feeling and extroverted intuition. Floating the room two by two from the womb to the holiday, there is no holiday. That first sentence is pretty, I mean, obviously it's using sensory detail, but it's abstracted detail. And then she has the middle part, which I feel like is very introverted feeling. If this is the life, why does it feel so good to die today? blue to gray, grow up and blow away. And this is another good song to illustrate her INFP-ness. On a different note, 
Here we have Les Claypool, the song being Rumble of the Diesel. And I think he has a really good use of extroverted intuition in his songs, as well as introverted sensing details. So the first line here is, I like the rumble of the diesel and the smell of the oil. I percolate my coffee off the radiator boil. I've been chasing tuna nearly 27 years. I got the eyeballs of an eagle, but there's ringing in my ears. See, and for me, this is a little bit more <laughs> uh, all over the place. It's very descriptive and very creative. But yeah, I think I would have to sit and take a little bit longer to figure out where are these connections coming from. And sometimes that's the thing with extroverted intuition, because uh, it's connected to that introverted function. <laughs> it's going to be subjected to that person. So sometimes you might not be able to derive the meaning from it as the person had intended or experienced it for themselves. So um, I wrote down this or highlighted this other line, some work to make the bread rise. I like to plow the ocean swell. Errol's got a sweet Monterey rigged for salmon and crab. Never had a family unless you count that old lab. I'll just read this other line I had highlighted as well. Looking back to 95, I had a fresh Cummings repower Dragon lines for albacore till the market went sour. We talked of strike for 40 days because the price was drove down. And when we finally settled up, we got less than a dollar a pound. So on, um, to contrast this with some of Metric's lyrics, you can see he has a lot of like sensory detail from his past. It seems unless he was doing the perception of somebody else. Um, these are like past experiences that he's had and he's fleshing out in the song. But by using extroverted intuition to convey that. This next one is really short. It's grinds. Be a body grinds is back to introverted feeling and extroverted intuition. So her writing or songs will probably have more similarity with metric as opposed to Les Claypool. For me, I think I have a more personal take on this song. It seems like she's um, out of body and it's um, almost a burden, like the body, to have a body is a burden, which I actually very much relate to that part. I think this is a very internal, so uh, introverted feeling, introverted sensing type statement. Again, conveyed through intuition. Lastly, I have System of a Down here. Um, System of a Down, I believe the lyrics were actually written by Darren. So yeah, Darren's writing, I'm pretty sure he is extroverted intuitive. Um, looking at the lyrics here for sugar, we have the kombucha mushroom people just sitting around all day. Who can believe you? Who can believe you? Let your mother pray. Obviously, it'll be like my interpretation because the kombucha mushroom people don't actually exist <laughs> that we know. <laughs> but that being probably your padded, richer, like golden spooned hippies that yeah, can just coast, coast through life with no worries. But yeah, then he 
He's going on his rant. Call it insane. I play Russian roulette every day, a man's sport with the bullet called life. So, um, he has some comparisons here. Also, it seems like he has a lot of general generalizations in this song, but R Russian roulette, uh, the dangerous gambling game where you stab a knife through your fingers and then that it's a man's sport. It does sound like he's comparing his life to the kombucha mushroom people. And also, I know that they're very so their meanings may also just be from the perspective of those people that are fighting out on the field, the battlefield, while you have the kombucha mushroom people who are not. But yeah, so he has some introverted sensing details here. I got a gun the other day from Sako. It's very specific. It's cute. Uh, he says, <laughs> I got a gun the other day from Sako. It's cute, small, fits right in my pocket. Yeah, right in my pocket, which is very specific. So it's pretty, uh, it's jumping around. He flips here in the next line to say, uh, trying to push my face to the ground where they all really want to do is suck out my motherfucking brain. So it's really just um, hopping along. There is meaning throughout system songs, um, which I love, but it might take some sitting down to interpret them. And this next one is called Needles. And here again, it has this personification happening where it's talking about a person as a parasite. So not a literal parasite, but a figurative one. So I cannot disguise all the stomach pains and the walking of the cranes when you do come out and you whisper up to me in your life of tragedy, but I cannot grow till you eat the last of me. Oh, when will I be free? And you, a parasite, just find another host, just another fool to roast, because you, my, t my tapeworm tells me what to do. So here, uh, the person is a parasite, they're feasting off of him. I can relate to this metaphor, <laughs> but it's not concrete. So he's not telling us a story about what this literal parasite is like or how he experienced some concrete event. So for this example, I guess I'll try to illustrate like how it would be different. Taking out the intuition from this, you would probably end up with a story that was saying, oh, I had this experience with this person and they were narcissistic. And whenever I met X person, they were unhealthy and it influenced my body badly. I don't know, um, <laughs> something like that. It's more concrete, it's more tied to the earth. There's a physical example that is happening. And yeah, I think uh, I had, so this is not to cause offense, but I did have an example because I used System of a Down for like one of my English classes to interpret meaning um, and did a presentation. And I remember being, I was really irritated, but I was trying to be open. And um, 
I immediately understood the problem was the girl just couldn't see um, the interpretation of the lyrics and she did not um, get where I was going with my uh, analysis of the lyrics. So uh, I guess that's pretty like big. Get the back story being, it was like a, it was about we're all going to a party. Um, but I was pulling out like the political meaning and agenda that they had with their song. And she was saying, oh, it's like they're going, the, oh, I love that song. It's um, they're going to a party, like they're going to a literal party. And I'm like, no, I might not have said, <laughs> I don't know what I said back to her, but the whole point is that is sensing. So sensing and being concrete about something and taking something at literal face value. So because the lyric mentioned party, she associated it with a literal party. If someone were to read this tapeworm song, like I was saying, they might uh, have a hard time and associate this with like the actual thing. Um, the actual, but yeah, that is all I have. I can't really think of anything else to add. So yeah, that's all I got.